The AP poll came out, and the Kentucky Wildcats were 23rd. Is that too low? Is that too high? That's going to be the conversation that we have on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Kentucky Wildcats on SI, joined, as always, by my co-host, Carson Ash. But Carson, let's get this thing started. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're getting really close to 2,000. That's uh, that's our, our next goal. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you all hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, really, really helps the show. Appreciate you all for that. Carson, how are we doing? It's Tuesday. How are we feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, there's some exciting stuff that happened over the weekend with the UK. Some exciting, some bad. Um, it's, it's exciting. We'll get to the unexciting. But, I'm going to let you yell for a minute. That'll be the yeah, but um, it's a good Tuesday. I mean, the weather's dropped. It's it's cold outside. It's freezing cold. I Not here in Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah, you're down in Birmingham for SEC Media Days. So mm-hmm. there's been some exciting stuff to come out of that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of news. It's yeah, yeah. Big, day, big show today. Big show today. So we'll talk a little bit. We'll get to SEC Media Day. Not a ton. Not as many exciting conversations as I had anticipated. Um, and I've got some videos. Those are, we'll probably throw those up on Thursday. Just and we'll talk about them then. But um, a few conversations we'll have on today's show. But I think more the more hot button topic for today, Carson, is the AP poll. Twenty third overall. Do you have it pulled up on your phone still? Yeah. Was it was it nine SEC teams? I believe it was nine, and obviously including. Yeah, um, let me Texas. double check. So you I'll got Bama at two. You got Auburn at eleven. Tennessee at 12, A&M at 13. Wow, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13. That's crazy. Uh, Arkansas at 16, Florida at 21, and Kentucky at 23, and Ole Miss at 24. What about Texas? Did you say Texas? Texas is in there. I completely forgot about Texas yeah. being in. So, not, so that's nine, right? Yeah. So yeah, maybe I do have some problems with this AP poll. Uh, we'll get into that. Yeah. So that is, to me, 23 – I was happy the cat. Now I know there's a lot of people. That I wish you, you know, were saying. I wish we run ranked and kind of be that underdog. And that's fair if you feel that way. I think that 23 is a fair place to have Kentucky. If you had them like 18, 19, I would have said that's fair. If you told me they were 13 or something, I'd have been like, eh, that's a little too high. I think anything in that 25 to 18 range, I would have understood and been fair with and been happy with. Um, But yeah, I I think it's a fine spot to have the cats. Now I'll tell you what, I mean, there's a few teams above. I mean, I don't, I think I don't get the Texas A&M thing. I, I, Texas, I mean, okay. I don't entire Florida. I'm like, I think Florida's better than Texas A&M. I, I, there's just some weird, aspects this so Carson what are your thoughts on Kentucky being ranked 23rd in the first AP poll of the college basketball season well I think it's a ranking that is fair as of now based off of where the program is at like switching new coach getting all new players like oh yeah Kentucky, we can rank Kentucky 23rd yeah. now I don't think the ranking is based off of our talent because I think I think there's not 23 teams that you can name that are better than ours. Yeah. Um, But I think at the moment, I think it's a fine ranking. I think, and it also gives us an opportunity to reach a high ranking because like mm-hmm. you said, you have eight other SEC teams that are ranked ahead of you or one isn't, but all the other ones are ranked ahead of you. Yeah. Um, So it also leaves up that opportunity and you've got also Duke and Zaga on there. So like you've got games that can, push your ranking so i'm not really too upset rankings don't matter like let's be honest rankings don't matter what matters is championships and wins that's all all that really matters yeah one of the common themes kind of wrapping today's sec media day into this conversation about the um the ap poll every coach mike white todd golden uh bruce pearl coach pope every coach we really heard from today it was a common theme of this is the best league in the sec but the one that really stood out to me was from Bruce Pearl, actually. And what he said that really well, – The I was, best league in the NCAA, you mean? Uh, yes. Did I say best league in the SEC? SEC, yeah. Now, the SEC is the best league in the SEC. Fun yeah. fact. Might not have known that. It's a factual um, statement. It is. That is not opinion. That is a fact. But <laughs> the um, Bruce Pearl said uh, – he was talking about, well, we had a bad practice, and I was getting on the guys. And he said, we could finish 10th in the SEC – 
and be a top 25 team in college basketball. And that just to me, you know, is a really cool statement, not only about where the SEC is as a conference or a basketball conference, but just about how you, you can beat yourself up a little bit this year. The cause of conference, you know what I mean? Kentucky's going to beat an Auburn and beat a Tennessee and lose to an Alabama. Like you're, these teams are going to beat up on each other. And I think that at the end of the day, the this is going to prepare these players, all SEC players. I, a lot of coaches went on to say, "Hey, we could be a double digit bid conference this year." And I, I mean, heck, Carson, I, I think that's going to happen. I mean, like Mississippi State's a darn good basketball team. They're unranked. There's a lot of good teams that weren't ranked in there. But the takeaway from all this to me is, let's say you are a, let's say Kentucky goes ten and eight in the SEC. Okay. 10 and 8 in the SEC, and you lose a couple games, maybe you shouldn't have or whatever, and you, you finish with like 13, 12, whatever losses. Okay, let's say that's the case. And you're a nine seed or an eight seed or whatever. That's the situation here. Let's say that happens. Uh, you're ready for the tournament because of this. You you might not be Gonzaga, which I know they're getting ready to move conferences and all that, but I mean, you're not Gonzaga where you're playing, you know, I mean, uh, Tarleton Beaumont, State. Seventh grade and, team. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you're not playing teams like that. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you know, you you maybe you're gonna Gonzaga, maybe Gonzaga has a two seed because they don't play anybody, and then they get exposed in the tournament, losing to somebody they shouldn't in the round in the round of 32. All of these SEC teams are going to beat up on one another, but I think it's gonna serve them well in March, Carson. No, I, I agree with you. And and like we saw last year, right? I mean, Kentucky made Bama look stupid. Yeah. They made Bama look stupid during the regular season. What's Bama do? They go and make a run, go to the mm -hmm. Final Four. I mean, so you, I mean, there's so much parity in this conference and so many yeah. good teams that teams are going to get beat up night in, night out. And I mean, there's teams at the bottom of this conference that can give you hell. Like, yeah. I, like Mississippi State. I mean, they, they're a good team, and they're not even ranked. And South you got, Carolina is a good basketball team. Yeah, South Carolina team. is a good team. I mean, you got, you've got you got good teams all over this conference, and um, I think there's there's more parity now than ever. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. I, I think that this is going to be – this is going to be the season where the SEC – and this was something – I think it was Mike White, Georgia's coach, talked about it, but he said something about like a couple of years ago – the team that finishes third in the SEC might be playing in the NIT. And now it's like team finishing third in the SEC is going to be a three seed or a two mm -hmm. seed, you know, and it's a real testament to SEC basketball. And it's exciting. I mean, well, yeah, there's, there's like eight or nine teams that could come in first or second. Yeah. And it's literally, yeah. And and it's exciting because I mean it, obviously for Kentucky fans we've always been you know a basketball first school but this is a, a football first conference and I it's always gonna be in my opinion maybe that'll change maybe it won't change I think it's always gonna be a football first conference but I think basketball is it could it could officially get to it's an everything conference well yeah my really look at that way. My opinion is the SEC is an everything conference, and it's yeah. going to be from here on out, especially with the NIL era. You got to yeah. think, people, SEC, there's not very many pro teams in the SEC, teams that yeah. play in areas with pro teams. So it's it's just constantly, you're rooting for your guys. Like Lexington, yeah. no pro team. We're, it's all strictly Kentucky Wildcats here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you got Tennessee and Knoxville. There's no pro team in Knoxville. You got... Bama, there's no pro team down there. Like the strictly, it's it's college, and yeah. you got teams up in the north that are good at basketball. But there's there's pro teams all all around those areas, and um, so I think the SEC is really buying in to being an everything conference. And it's, I mean, you see, I I think we were probably the best conference last year too. Like I I think the SEC is really really good at basketball and I think they are the best at football and I think they could be the best at basketball this season and they're the best at baseball I mean you're the best yeah. at oh yeah well, that's, sports. that's not even like, close that, so, that hasn't yeah. been close that is true I mean that's not even a, I mean that it's basically you're basically the trip double A at this point the SEC yeah. but so Carson 
23. That's where the cats are ranked 23. What are your thoughts on too high, too low there? For me, I would say just a little too low, but I don't think it's out of the realm of being like egregious. Yeah. Like it's I not, think it's not crazy. I think it's not crazy. I think I would probably like them to be at probably 17 or 18, but mm. I could see why they put them at 23. I mean, because there's so much unknown. We have, I mean, we haven't even seen these guys play against anybody. So, yeah. I mean, it's for them, for the voters, I think, like, yeah, that, that's probably their mindset. We haven't seen anything come to fruition mm. yet. So we can't, we have nothing to base our ranking off. Exactly. Of. You don't. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not upset about it. I don't think many should be because, like I said, there's plenty of opportunities to yeah to get yeah. to where you want to. It, it doesn't matter. It, it, no. Now what what I want to hear what grinded my gears a little bit. Um, you have any other AP poll thoughts? Because I want to move on to this. It, it wraps in a little bit. I mean, we can we can. Yeah. Where what is your Kim Pom stance? Oh, uh, see, no, I mean, not in where we're ranked. I mean, in because we'll get to where we're ranked. But I mean, what is your Ken Palm stance in how much it matters? I think it I think it matters a little bit. I think mm-hmm. it'll matter more as the season goes on for sure. But like ranking Ken Palm before the season even starts is kind of crazy to me. Um, because this team has not played together. You can't base the rankings off of players who have come from different teams. That's kind of crazy to me. Like that you would even come up with that list. Uh, yeah. Um, but um so I'm not taking anything from it right now, to be honest. Like, I could care less about that list um, yeah. in all seriousness. That's but you, you, you make a good point. Whenever it's whenever February rolls around, yeah, I'll probably pay attention to Kim Palm because most of the winners statistically come off of that category. It, it, yeah, because and we've talked about that on this show before, Carson. I mean, you have yeah. to be in the, you know, I think it's uh, top 40 on defense, top 20 on offense, or, or maybe it's the other way around, but st- point stance. I, yeah, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm bought into Kim Palm. I just think at this point of the season, I would I agree with you because I was kind of pissed off about it for a little while. and But you're right, because here's the deal. They didn't just close their eyes and click buttons. The, the numbers and I'm sure video and, and scouting went into this. But to me, it doesn't matter. It, it, you know, Only one of those I players on the team has played under Mark Pope. Yeah. I so, agree with you with that, Carson. Because at first I was I was I was mad about it because I'm a huge I'm a big Kim Pom guy. But I agree with you. You I don't it, I was more I'm now less pissed off about it because you're right. You really can't base anything off of okay. Well, we watched film from Lamont Butler and Amari yeah. Williams with Drexel in San Diego State. We're gonna put Kentucky 42 in Kim Pom. I don't I don't think it matters. Now, I also what I will tell you, what I will tell you is Bull defecation is having Kentucky's offense. And I don't care. I don't care what kind of scouting, how you went about making those. I don't care. Having Kentucky's offense 28th. Yeah. Go kick rocks respectfully at a wall. No, that no. Do you know, do you know where Arkansas was ranked on that list? Cause I, I just, I'm curious. I genuinely um, – Arkansas was ranked 25th in Ken Palm, 37 in offense, 22 in defense. With 22 in defense? 22 in defense with basically the same team that we had last year that I mean, was 181st. I get, yeah, and I get you got Adu and you got some okay defenders, but I don't think yeah, Janelle but, Davis – Yeah, but that offense ain't 35th or whatever if you got yeah. Adu out on the court. It's yeah. more like 60th. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. Um it, now, Ken Palm, and once again, I, I buy into it. I have a personal rule about it when I start carrying um, 10 games in. We're not going to be the people that, oh, my gosh, we scored 110 points against uh, yeah. Santa Barbara, and now our Ken Palm ranking well, see, is that's number why, one. That's why I don't really buy into it until later in the season because yeah. I also think the uh, Big 12 or whatever, I think they – they kind of cheat their schedule a little bit to the point where they play all these easy teams to make themselves look better. So they get better seating like Kansas, they play cupcakes and then they'll, they'll go and yeah. that whole conference will try to make, try to make each other look better by playing terrible teams at the beginning of the season. And then, yeah. so it doesn't hurt when they beat up on each other. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I'm bought into all that. So yeah, I'm, I'm no longer as irked with the Ken Palm as I was. Cause I was kind of pissed off about it. Cause I, I just, I'm like, I don't know yeah, what I you just, just look at. 
I just don't understand how you can take any. Yeah, that's good that point. You're right. Into I'm those ratings because like they haven't played under Pope. They haven't played no. together. Yeah. Like there's there's nothing you can really buy yeah. into that makes you think that's yeah. where they should be ranked. Also, side note, you know, we'll be, I'll be at the blue white game on Friday. Oh, I just thought about that. Hmm. Looks like I'm not going to Fright Night. Oh. 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 Killer. But <laughs> um uh, but um the yeah, that one took me a minute to get over. But so, you know, that's not going to be televised. So if you all want honest and quick opinions, takeaways from the blue white game, Wildcats today is going to be your stop for that because, you know, I'll be there to tell you um, thoughts on that. Um, but, you know, so th there, there's Ken Palm. I agree. Then there's AP poll. The other thing, Jackson Robinson being third team SEC. I, I wouldn't have put him first team. I probably wouldn't have either. I think there's a world where he finishes first team, but I think he's a second team All SEC player right now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't pay attention to who else was on that list. Who yeah. do you know who made the second team and third Let team? Me, oh, it went away. Let me pull it up for you. The All SEC teams were okay. First team SEC Player of the Year was Sears. First team was Sears Johnny Broom, as you would say. Walter Clayton Jr., Zakai Ziegler, and Wade Taylor IV. Now, I am, and I want to get this out there, I am the number one Wade Taylor IV is the most overrated player. Oh, oh, you said Wade Taylor. I got someone else in that list who's the most overrated player in the whole conference. Um, so, Wade I bet you Taylor. Can guess who it is. Uh, He's Ziegler? a point guard. He's about 5'8". Ziegler? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but so that's the first team. No personal disrespect to Mr. Wade Taylor. I just think he's a little bit overrated. Um, at times he's inefficient. Now, we as Kentucky fans, I bet y'all are sitting there going, What are you talking about? Yeah, he always gets 80 against Kentucky. That always happens. But if you watch any other game, if you take his Kentucky stats away, the dude averages three points a game. If you have his Kentucky stats, <laughs> he averages 27 on the year. That's how much he scores against Kentucky. Um, obviously that's a joke, but second team, Grant Nelson, uh, Jonas Adu, Jonel Davis, oh. Matthew Morrell, Josh Hubbard, Grant Nelson. I, and I don't know if they do this based on j the five best players, if they do it based on a, a guard, so I, I, you know I mean? But I don't think when it comes to player, like if you took position out of it and ranked the top, you know, 10 players in the SEC, I'm taking Jackson Robinson over Grant Nelson. I'm taking him over Jonas Adu, and I'm taking him over Matthew Morrell. I, Josh Hubbard. I am a huge Josh Hubbard guy. I love so, Josh Hubbard. I actually do too. Um, and I think Janelle Davis because he's going to have to be is going to be. Well, I, here's my thing, Andrew. If aren't you a little worried if Davis is only a second teamer? I think Arkansas is in trouble if Davis is not a first teamer. Because yeah. I don't know where they're going to get their scoring from. I really don't know. Like, yeah, you're cal you're putting a lot of cards in the DJ Wagner basket, and yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and then the third team is Chad Baker Mazzara for Auburn, um, Alex Condon for Florida, Colin Murray Boyles, who I think is really good for South Carolina, uh, Tremont Mark for Texas. He transferred from Arkansas, right? That sounds familiar. Yeah, I think, so. Mark, I think you may be right. And then Alex Con um, and then obviously Jackson Robinson. Um, so that's the third team. Um, so uh, um, I can promise you that Andrew Carr got one vote to be on the third team all last That's what I'm saying. How does Andrew Carr not make that? I don't know. People are they're getting snubbed, in my yeah. opinion. Um, but I, I can promise you he got one vote. So I can I can promise you that. I can promise you I that think Andrew Jackson. Carr is Awesome. I can promise you that Jackson Robinson got one vote to be second team all SEC. Um, but those are those teams. I think Jackson Robinson is going to be a I think he's going to be when it comes to best players in the SEC, he's going to be in that four, five, six, seven range where he's I think he's going to be very much second team all SEC, fringe first team all SEC. That's how good I mean. If if Kentucky scores like they think they're gonna score per game. You would think his numbers would be as as good of, if not better than. I think he averages north of these guys. 
in my opinion. I think he averages north of 17. So I, I've said 18 to 20. Uh, and that's know, just – it's going to be because he's really good, and it's going to be because we're going to shoot the ball 150 yeah, times a game. Million million shots per game. No, Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, takeaways from what Coach Pope had to say at media day for me, I asked him about um, – I asked his opinion on, you know, I, I basically said, Coach, you know, you come in here, it, it's there's a lot of excitement, and then you see the fans with your introductory press conference, you see the fans big with madness, and I kind of asked him like, hey, like, what do you think about how this fan base has kind of welcomed you, your family, and um, and this in in your team? And he just had such great things to say about Kentucky fans, and rightfully so. Obviously, he had great things to say about Kentucky fans, but that was a fun question. He talked about Coach Calipari. He obviously had a great, you know, hey, a lot of respect for Coach Calipari, nothing negative to say, as he should. That's exactly how you want him to answer that question. And I I believe that he believes that. I'm not, you know what I mean? Oh, no, yeah. Pope seems Um, like a really down-to-earth person. Yeah. He believes most Um, of I think he believes everything he says. Yeah. So those were kind of the, some of the thoughts from from the things he had to say. Um, so that is really all I have from all that, Carson. I know you have to do your rant. Well, I want to talk a little bit about madness since we were both there because that. Yeah, we'll do that madness was a, and then I'll let you rant. That was a yeah, yeah. I'll save that for the last. Yeah. Um, but I know me and you both went with our buddies. Uh, that was a really really cool experience. Um, yeah. even from. The women's aspects, I thought Kenny Brooks was awesome. I thought that whole thing was cool. Um, the LED core was – I couldn't breathe. There was just so much aura coming from Kenny Brooks. I mean, it, it was, was like, – that, that video of him – did the Morgan Wallen walk out. Yeah. Like, that was the coolest thing. I he know. Just, you know just random I was people. like, oh, he, this dude's got swag. Like, he's now, immediately got swag. I do – the way Coach Pope came out was cool. Mm-hmm. But, gosh darn it, would have been awesome – if he had like he did like they were just playing the met him down at all deans as he's walking out and he's just dapping up Jeff Shepard and like all these old players dude that'd have been awesome. Yeah, but I, don't out want, I don't want that artist uh ever stepping foot in a Kentucky arena nor singing about Kentucky. Who? He, oh Morgan Tennessee Wallen. Nine. He's a big ball and he just throws chairs off of balconies. Okay, you did that last week. <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. not in Nashville. <laughs> Not in Nashville, so it's okay. You just can't do it in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but I thought it was really cool. Um, you couldn't really take much away from it because, yeah, I mean, no. they were playing on an LED court, so you couldn't really. Other than the three-point competition, which was pretty awesome between yeah. Travis and Trent, um, I knew – I just knew Travis was going to come out. I, Trent had an amazing round, by the way, but I knew Travis was going to come somehow win. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Travis just refuses to lose to Trent Noah and Rupp Arena. Yeah. Which is what it sounds like to me. Refuses. Um, but you know, I uh, th- the other thing, I also asked Lamont Butler about Big Blue Madness. He talked great. I'll save that video. I'll play that Thursday because I have some. We'll see. What about that. his song? That what was awesome. That? I also asked him about what went into the Macarena and single ladies from Kerr and Carr. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I'll, the so single we'll ladies. The single ladies was awesome. He did that. that he did that dance perfect. Yeah, and if, if you weren't there, you I don't think you got a good glimpse of it because on the I went back to watch it and I couldn't really tell. But if you were there, you got to see him do the whole dance. It yeah, was, it was, it was great. Hilarious. He did the whole thing. Yeah, it was it was great. But um, I mean, it was just it was just a special. It, now the other thing, last thing about just coolness, Trent Noah's "Never oh. Leave Harlan Alive" was the coolest thing I've ever seen. It was it was insane. Life. That was it was awesome. It was, awesome. It was, all, was I got chilled. Like go. I got. So he, yeah, he was the first one to go. So it starts just that song, "Never Leave Harlan Alive," and then he's just up with the. Oh, and he man. comes from the sky. Yeah, like, <laughs> it'd be really like, cool, oh, Coach Pope. I wish uh, the only thing I would uh, would change about Big Blue Madness is if they could have gotten him on like a zip line and he could have like glided down onto the court. That'd have been cool. That's my only complaint. And Colin um, Chandler has crazy bounce. Yes, he does. That dunk was awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So yeah. Th- but it was special. It was a special night, Carson. And uh, night. like like you had mentioned in the previous podcast about thinking he wouldn't show up, and I um uh, I kind of alluded to the fact that he would. I told you that someone important, and I forget who it was. Someone important tweeted he wouldn't be there. So yep. I assumed he wouldn't be there. But like the ball knower I am, Rick Pitino. How a ball knower. <laughs> Rick Pitino. <laughs> Rick Pitino showed up and it was crazy. It was kind of like a jump scare almost because 
I was not expecting him to be there. And then he's walking the whole, all the teams from previous years are walking out. Even Deron Lamb made an appearance with the 2012 national championship trophy, which was nice to see since he was the player of the game, that game. Um, it was, it was crazy when Rick, when they showed Rick, it, people went nuts. Um, it was really cool to see. He was, he was emotional about it. He really gracious. Um, I think it was, it was a really cool moment. And I think we'll always look back and remember that moment as one of the yeah. big, big blue madness moments. So yeah. it was cool to be there and be a part of that um, and getting to get, get to witness that. Um, yeah. Cause he is a part of our history. Um, and he coached probably one of the greatest college basketball teams of all time. Yeah, it was, that was a, I thought that was really, really cool. That was a really special moment without question. Um, so those are my big blue madness um, thoughts, Carson. I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself and let you go. Yeah. So um, this, this past Saturday um, coming off of our big win against Ole Miss, uh, we took on the Vanderbilt Commodores um, and we lost. Um, we lost at home to Vandy, which makes us now two and 10 and our last 12 um, home SEC games. And that's a horrific stat. Um, that is a horrific stat. Oh, and I think both – the one of those wins was a bad Vanderbilt team, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. And so you can't do that if you're Stoops. And it wasn't even the fact that they outplayed us, in my opinion. Um, we made some really bonehead mistakes. We were lacking discipline. A um, lot of penalties that cost us points. I mean, you can point to a couple of Dane penalties. Dane made some stupid mistakes, even though he's been pretty awesome recently. Um, just a lack of discipline. And when you have that, you start questioning your program because it comes from a lead man, right? Like you, the dis discipline starts from the leader, in my opinion, in every team or anything I've been a part of. So – so you got to question Stoops a little bit. I mean, you got running backs out there that won't even tie their shoes to play. Um, and I, I'm, why do you say that? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Why do you say that? Because now your best running you back know what is reminds probably going to transfer. Do you know what that reminds me of? I got an immediate flashback. Do yeah. you remember when, um, and I when Kenny Payne, after a game or before whatever they lost to, I mean, it was probably oh, in a I know where you're going with this. And mm -hmm. he goes. Do you want to know why this guy didn't play? He didn't want to wear these uh, whatever leg. What are the tights under his? We didn't have the tights he wanted. Why do you say that? Yeah, Coach Stoops. I don't. Normally, I think he's pretty good in the press conference when it comes to saying the right. It's not saying the yeah. wrong things. Why do you say? Well, he doesn't tie you. So you mean this has been a problem? You were the head coach. This has been a problem multiple times, and. You're just like, well, Wilcox has played, and I'm pretty sure every single game this season. And, and you're telling me we're whatever six now, seven, whatever games in the year. Now you bring and it up, and you're going, Well, you won't tie his shoes. What the hell are you doing if you can't get your running back to tie his shoes? I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. Not only you that, is that this, Wilcox is probably averaging 13 yards a carry. So who the hell gives a shit? Yeah, if he's tying his cleats or not, play him. I don't care. Would you care if you're running back? Well, that, well, well I think what he's saying though, Carson. I mean, I get is is the whole like, well, his no, it's the aspect of it. I, it's the aspect of it. I know, but it's just like, not only don't say that, don't say that. I don't know if he was trying to make a joke. I don't know if that was a legit thing going on. I, I think it was a legit thing. I mean, I, it I think it is too. Serious. But at the end, of the day, you like don't that. go say that. These, I mean, we have. All of our great listeners, I mean, we have coal miners. We have hardworking people that are Kentucky fans, hardworking people that watch this podcast. And damn it, why in that that spend hard-earned money to go to these football games or go get a beer and with And Kroger Field has them. been awesome. Yeah. Like, the atmosphere, we are finally a real SEC school atmosphere, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And it's taken forever to get to that point. And now it's starting to – after – I think the the – the real issue is now those pony up comments are starting to be thrown back in soup's face. Yeah. And it's hard because these fans, they're, 
they are they they're coal miners they're hard-working people they don't want to spend their money on this product that he's putting out on yeah. the field right now if you're going to go and lose to vanderbilt and not only some people in the state have to travel three plus hours to even get there on game day and i i don't know like he's i think he's starting to lose some of the fan base here yeah and i'm not saying you have to be a coal miner or i don't care if you're a coal miner. no yeah I don't there's care plenty if you're a of CEO, hard, great hard i don't care if you're people. a venture capitalist i don't even know what that is it's a word i've heard said before i don't yeah. care what you do for a living but if you spend the money that you work hard on every day to go watch your favorite football team play and this stuff happens and then coach stoops comes out and says stuff and i'm not trying to to really hammer coach stoops i mean he deserves it but i'm not trying to be you know crazy negative here but damn it i mean you people work so hard we were up to this we were up, team. we or we were tied seven seven with two minutes left pretty much in the first half and you go to the locker room down 14 to seven we had the ball at that point how in the world do you go down 14 to seven at uh, that point in it just game? it top to bottom and i think vandy vandy's a good football team they it's are longer, you know and Matt, Matt, I was listening to the post game show, and Matt made a really good point. He said that um, this that Vandy team reminds me of the old Kentucky teams because yeah. they're punching above their their weight class, yeah, and they're they're coming and they're doing all the right things. They're doing all the right things. They don't make mistakes. They're disciplined. They don't make mistakes, and they play football the right way. And this Kentucky team, it seems like if one player talks a little bit of crap, we start throwing punches, which. It's it's annoying as fans. I think like you you make a big play, you get a big play, and then you head tap someone with the ball, and you get fifteen yard penalty. Like what the heck are you doing? Get back to the huddle and win the game. Yeah, I don't. Are you here? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you. Are how how far are you from calling for it? Um, if you lose to. Florida this weekend and you lose to Auburn. I don't know, but I will, I will win winner, man. I He's will proven winner. I, I will say this. Stoops has brought us to heights. We didn't know were reachable. Yeah. So I still have some respect for coach Stoops and I still think there's a chance he could write the ship. The yeah. problem is that the fan base seems to be turning on him and jumping off ship. And when that happens, nothing good really ever comes from that. Uh, ask coach Cal. Um, and you got a really new up and comer coach that's been really, really good. And he played here and yeah. his name's John Summerall and he's got fire. He's got, he played oh, at Kentucky a damn winner. Just a and winner. he's a winner. Yeah. He's a winner. He loves to win and he loves football and he has that fire that I think Kentucky fans are really looking for. Um, and the problem with me is like if you wait on some raw too much, then he'll go to somewhere. He'll be big somewhere else. Yeah. And he'll kill it. I, I have no doubt some raw will kill it wherever he yeah. goes. Uh just because he's that type of guy. He's that hard worker, yeah, ruthless. He's a lot like Coach Pope in that aspect, to where he's like just gets after it every single day, no matter what. Um, never gets complacent. Um, and so I would hate to see a, a world where you hold on to Stoops one more year. He goes and to Lane, Florida when they fire. And Lane goes to Florida, and then Summerall goes to Ole Miss because yeah. that's where we got Summerall from, if you don't remember. He came from Ole Miss. Um, as the, I'm pretty sure he was the linebackers coach or something at yeah. Ole Miss. And then, um, yeah, he goes there after Lane goes to Florida because I I would bet on Lane probably going to Florida if they can't write the ship this season. Let me, let me throw something at you here. Let me throw something at you. And I'm going to compare some other things SEC schools have done. There is a a theme we often hear about. Well, Kentucky, we're, we're just not in a good spot to be a good program. All all of our NIL money goes to. Are you saying you haven't heard that people are? Are you saying? Yeah, you I, just, I don't think that's right. Well, I, that's what I'm going to say. I, I'm, I'm so. Okay, then let's do it. Let, let's compare some other, some similar, it, some similar things from the opposite side of it. The two Alabama schools on the hardwood, Alabama and Auburn. Those two programs, they, ha I mean, there's some history there. They've done some things in the past, but I mean, for a long time, they haven't been good. They make good coaching hires, 
And those coaches elevate to where both those teams have been to a Final Four. I'm trying to think of like a football program. And how did how did Bruce Pearl get Auburn to where he's at now? What did he do when he first got to Auburn? He brought the fans together yeah, and point. made it feel like a family because he's good at that type of stuff. And I think that, that spark, Pope did the same thing when he came back. Yeah. I think that's a spark that we don't have right now for our football team. I don't think we feel like a family. We're not all one unit right now. We're not all on the same page. And um, that's when changes are need need to be and, made. And so my point from all this, I was trying to think of a football team. I was on the way to saying, well, maybe like drink wits in Missouri, but Missouri has a pretty rich football history. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not, I mean, you know, they've, they've had some really good years when I mean, they were in some SEC championships in the early 2010s. We, when they made the move over the SEC, but point is point of, of that conversation. I was trying to give a better example from a football team, but we're going to stick with uh, Oates and Pearl in their schools is, you know, I do. Did we ever think those two schools would be relevant in basketball? No, they were good coaches, and they did a good job. Coach Stoops has done a great job of taking us from here to here, maybe even here to here. You know what I mean? Like taking us up in a, in the right direction substan- substantially. But he can't get over that hump. But, and I think it's part of adapting. Like I just don't think he's adapted. Either yeah. that or he's gotten too complacent. One of the two because, I mean, people are going to blame the offense, of course, and they should. But yeah. don't blame the offensive coordinator, in my opinion. Yeah. Because look at some of these guys in the past, right? You got Cohen. He put up 50 points in the NFL last, last this past week. Mm-hmm. Um, and Shannon Dawson, the person we thought was the worst OC ever, is at Miami right now with Cam Ward killing it. So, um, I mean, it might just be Stoops' style of play and – I mean, you gotta adapt. If it's that, if it, if that's the case, you have to adapt because you can't win games with seven possessions. You just can't. I mean, you technically you can, but you can't be a great football team. Like you don't see the Alabamas of the world doing that. Yeah, uh, I just I I don't know. I, I just how at some point you know you say, well, we're Kentucky. We're really good at basketball, and if Stoops can just get us to a bowl game so that we can go down to Florida once a year or go down to Nashville to watch a bowl game, that's great. That's wearing off to me. It's such a bullshit narrative to me because yeah. why not? Why can't we be good? You look at – Tennessee sucked a couple years ago and look at where they're at now. I mean, their quarterback still isn't good, so like they're still not great. But – they're, they've gotten so much better. The recruits they're getting are so much better. that I mean, there's look at freaking Vandy. Vandy's good this year. Vandy has been a JV middle school team for how long? And they're they're good Not this even year. a varsity middle school? You were talking about no. a JV middle school team. They were they, they were almost in the AAC. They're like just straight dummy bears. I mean, it's like, I, yeah. I mean, I don't. You're right. You're like, right. Why, can't, why is the narrative always for Kentucky, we can't be this great football team? Like. Why not? Why can't we yeah. be? We have the backing. The crafts will back us. Like, yeah. I, to me, it's crazy. To me, it seems like an excuse and an easy out. I think if you, I, I, do you think we go beat Florida? No. I think we, yeah. I think we, I think we can. I think uh, I, my, I, I actually think we do, which is crazy to say because, you know, Stoops after he loses always. He's good wins. at, Almost like it's, lose the job and then so, it, yeah, and yeah, it's so yeah, weird because yeah. like you'll go and have the best win of your tenure and then freaking go and lose to Vandy and then you'll go beat Florida on the road at night and like so that's for me it's too much up and down um, instead I, of constant. I've growth. watched enough Mark Stoops in Kentucky football to tell you exactly how the season is going to play out. You want to know exactly what's going to happen? We're going to go six and six. No. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna go seven and five. I think you're gonna beat Florida. You're gonna beat Auburn. You're gonna beat Murray State, and I think you're gonna beat Louisville. And you're gonna go seven and five because you're gonna lose to Texas and you're gonna lose Tennessee. But then it's like, oh, we went seven and five, and then we played the bowl game, and we generally win our bowl well, game. See, that, and then great, and then that's next where year, my, the same thing's gonna yeah, happen. That's where my nightmare scenario comes in because they're not gonna get rid of them because you yes, can't. They're not getting rid of them, but five. you don't see any growth. Yeah, and that's where you're stuck. That's 
that's the death zone in my opinion. Like watching enough Kentucky football in my life, I almost wish I could literally go bet on exactly that situation to happen. I know that's what's going to happen. We're going to beat Florida and Auburn. We're going to beat Murray State. We're going to beat And people Louisville. are going to be like, oh, we beat Louisville. No, Louisville we beat will Louisville probably be ranked because they play a bunch yeah. of JV middle school teams on their schedule. So they'll probably be ranked. And we'll beat them and be like, oh, great win. We beat Louisville, blah, blah, blah. Not really. It's Louisville still. They're still Louisville. That's what happened I don't last care. year. We were bad. Well, but we beat Louisville. Yeah, so Louisville's they, not good. No, I'm sorry. It, that, it, it shouldn't be. This, now, we need to beat them because they're awful and we don't like them. But yeah. that shouldn't be like, well, we beat Louisville. Or, well, yeah. we, we beat Ole Miss on the road. Who cares? You yeah. lost Vandy in South Carolina and you're a point it away. It should be, or, let's make the college football playoff. That's, that's what the goal should be. Yeah, yeah I don't. It's frustrating. All right, because if you were a really elite football team, you would say, "Why can't we win out?" You know, like why? Why that that should be the mindset, but that's not the mindset. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We've 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 yapped enough, Carson. We we need to save some some air for Thursday. Sorry, I got carried away. No, that's fine. I enjoy. I, I did too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, any other thoughts on any of this stuff, Carson? Well, oh, I did forget to mention some. We uh, Caden Lewis was on a visit for Big Blue Madness. Yeah. That looked like that went really, really well. He, he said yeah. early November for his uh, commitment date. Um, so uh, it looks like the dream class is coming to fruition. Uh, Caleb Wilson actually commented on his picture with him and Michael, or I keep saying Michael just because we grew up with Michael, but Malachi Moreno. Um, and he said, he said, this is sexy. <laughs> That's yeah. what his comment was. It's but, sexy. Yeah, but he was on a visit at Tennessee w when he commented on it. So that's a good bad sign. decision, young man. Bad yeah, decision, well, young man. Yeah. He, well, I'm glad he visited just to know where he doesn't need to end up. Yeah, just um, where he doesn't want to be. Just look at their football <laughs> field from the outside. Go, oh, yeah. Do I want to go there? There's like broken windows. Yeah. Um, there's like barbed wire all over their stadium. Why would yeah. I go there? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they wear orange. <laughs> um, but the um, <laughs> that was good. Um, and we're probably deep enough in that no one's no one's gonna be able to appreciate yeah. that joke. But I hope you did. Um, so that's gonna do it for us today. Oh, like Andrew said, lost to Cam in fantasy stop. football. The Cam that we made fun of. Excuse me, sorry. The Cam that we made fun of for how many weeks in a row for being owned five, Dude, we were five, like five weeks seconds ago. away from avoiding this. Can you not just pipe down? I had to get it in, it, it had to happen. But yeah, Andrew lost to Cam, and I I beat Jared with like half my team on buys to move to uh, six and zero. So Team Nash is still killing it. We're looking for our three peat in the in the league. Um, but yeah, Andrew lost to Cam. So we'll see you on the next episode of Wildcats today. <laughs>